place was not the nicest remodel. Anyway, um, this morning I had a nice conversation with, um, I remember when they were building this house. My buddies Chuck and Michelle lived right across the street. Anyway, I was having this conversation with someone this morning about uh, having a tough time defending yourself, stepping up for yourself. And uh, I was trying to encourage him to, uh, I mean, he's a full grown man. And we were talking about, you know, just how he uh, has a tough time at work and he feels like he gets shoved around or his voice doesn't get heard. Um, then, you know, talk about other issues where he's going through some uh, problems with uh, his siblings. Mother passed away. And they're arguing over um, the trust. And he just seems to really have a tough time with defending himself or stepping up and just speaking, speaking up in general. And it reminded me when I was a little kid, I was a fat little boy. And... Uh, I was never really good at stepping up for myself. Like I took a lot of shit, more shit than I should have, uh, more shit than I would take today, definitely. But I don't know if it was, uh, I went to, th God, 13 schools, 13 schools. I went to like four or five high schools. I don't know how many elementaries. Every year I was a new kid. And when you're the new kid and you're the fat kid, you better be funny. I wasn't terribly funny. But uh, sports certainly, being an athletic as I was, definitely um, gave me a, some credibility and spared me from some of the entire grief that one would receive if uh, he was just a fat kid, dorky, geeky, uh, like myself. My pants would hang. You know, it wasn't my fault. I had a big butt. My pants never fit me the right way. Butt crack always hanging out rambunctious, falling all the time, holes in my knee pads. My mom, I come home crying and kids at school are calling me fat and my mom would be like, no baby, you're not fat, you're just husky. And I guess I was husky because back then, you know, in the Sears section, they definitely had an entire area dedicated to husky, which is the big beefier kids. They don't do that anymore. Now it's too politically incorrect. You can't just have a fat kid section. And even in the fat kid section, my pants, I'd buy them like man size waist. The length would always be off. And thank God both my grandmothers were seamstresses. They, uh, I'd come home and we'd stand me on the old school hardwood dining room tables. I'd stand on them and my grandmother would hem my pants and that'd last about a minute. It also patched the knees. And I used to get a lot of shit at school and but I was always really good at defending others. That's one of the things I tell my kid every night before he goes to bed. I say, Enzo, what do the big strong boys do? And he says, take care of the little guys. And I was always really good at stepping up for others. Um, you know, you could pretty sh shove me around, lay in a bunch of fat kid jokes, you know, some of your mama jokes in there. And I was pretty passive. I didn't like really getting into it. But you lay it into any of my friends, especially the guys that were weaker. Um, one of the things I learned going to so many schools that it was really tough to get in with the cool kids right away. But the other kids, the nerds, the geeks, the weirdos, the emos, and you know those kids that were still trying to figure themselves out, they wore the glasses, they were colorful, they didn't know maybe they were gay yet. Um, those kids. It was really easy to uh, fit in with those kids and they were very receptive of me because I was a big, stocky, strong, bullish kid. And even though I wasn't good at defending myself, I wouldn't mind stiff arming someone who gave one of my, my other friends uh, any shit, any, any grief. So that's what we were talking about this morning. And as I was encouraging him, you know, there comes a point where you're entitled and to to step up for yourself and there's a lot of fear about retribution and you see a lot of crap on television and people feel like if they stand up for themselves that uh they might lose their jobs or they might lose some friends or they might some fam you know ruffle some feathers with some family members and you know what that's a bunch of bullshit i feel like if you don't step up for yourself you don't stand up for yourself people are just going to learn to walk all over you 
And what happens is you don't learn to deal with confrontation early enough. You start having emotional reactions, getting angry, that anger builds up, you explode. And it's not the healthiest way for you to live your life, letting all that emotion uh, build up and get bottled up. It'll make you sick, it'll kill you, it'll give you a heart attack. And that's, that's no way to live. Even though it's hard and it can be uncomfortable if you're not used to it, you gotta stand up for yourself. You have a right to express your feelings, let people know that you're feeling, um, your voices are being heard, you feel like they're not understanding your point of view, you're feeling like they're just plain old walking all over you, and that you're getting screwed. And a lot of people, especially, you know, funny with real estate, you know, a, a lot of people don't further investigate and learn about what their rights are. I had a client the other day, a friend, not a client, call me and said, hey, we're being, you know, evicted out of our house. We've been here for six years. They gave us a 30-day notice. Um, we don't know what to do. And I said, you know, that just doesn't sound right to me. You should at least gotten a 60-day notice. And she's like, well, you know, the owner's been really good to me. And this and that. I'm like, well, if the owner's been really good to you and he's that great a guy and he knows that you're in the middle of a school year with your family and the holidays are coming up, you think he'd at least give you the 60-day notice. So I got her the, you know, something that she could read showing that she absolutely was entitled to a 60-day notice. I also called an attorney friend of mine and he, he had concurred. And all of a sudden she felt like she was being taken advantage of and this guy wanted to screw her over. And the truth is that, what's that saying? Uh, wolf in sheep's clothing. I mean, people will take advantage of you if you let them. And I'm not saying that you always have to be suspicious of people, but you do have to do your own due diligence. You do need to get the right information. And once you get that information, if the information is in your favor, you have absolutely every right to defend yourself. And if you don't defend yourself, you're gonna get screwed for the rest of your life. People are gonna learn to walk all over you. And for those of you that are parents, I just say this. You do that in front of your kids, your kids are gonna grow up to let themselves get walked over. Your kids are gonna get pushed around. And I don't want my, certainly don't want my kid living that way. So I guess I wanna just leave you with saying, you know, don't be afraid to stand up for yourself, especially when you feel like there's an injustice. Don't just take um, people's information at face value, especially like if it's something um, as pressing as having to relocate within 30 days and you got a family. Do your, do your homework, do your investigation. If, if something smells funny to you, learn, figure it out. And if you, if you come to the conclusion that something is not right, stand up for yourself and say something. All right. I want to thank all of you for watching these videos. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for all the support. We got to go grocery shopping here. Rebecca's getting hungry. I can hear her belly starting to rumble. Y'all have a blessed day.